Well, hello again, friends. My name is Reverend Thomas Harper, and I am the pastor of St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Bryan College Station. This is Weekly Theistic Reflections, where each week I take a verse of scripture, talk about what's going on in the context within that scripture, or how that scripture might relate to what's going on in our world today, or just what might be going on in my life and with my family. Uh, if you're new here, I invite you to take a look around the channel. Uh, we got a lot of past videos. If you like the content, I invite you to hit the like and subscribe button. That will help us out a little bit, as well as make sure that you will get uh, all of our new content. I post a new video every single week, usually by Thursday. And if you think that somebody would benefit particularly from the content of this specific video, I invite you to share that video with them in order that that might bless them as well. I'm entitling this episode, Beware of Our Echo Chambers. The scripture that I picked today is Proverbs 3, 1 through 2, and 5 through 8. Child, do not forget my teachings, but let your heart keep my commandments. For length of days and years of life and abundant welfare they will give you. Trust in the Lord with all your hearts, and lean not on your own understanding of things. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Turn away from evil. It will be a healing for your flesh and a refreshment for your body. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. And so, if you are watching this when I first post it, this is uh, just a few days before our 2020 presidential election. Um, and it really made me think about talking about the importance of our echo chambers. Now, I am in the, currently in the middle of a three-week sermon series on Sunday mornings where I talk about religion and politics uh, and what it means for us as Christians. Uh, how do we navigate through a culture that is uh, pluralistic and how are we as Christians to vote and, and what should we be thinking about when it comes to the faith that we live but also the country that we live in. And so I'm not really going to rehash any of that or much of that here in this video. Uh, if you are interested in uh, hearing my thoughts specifically on that topic, uh, you can listen to my sermons here uh, and get kind of an idea all leading up to my last Sunday on the series, which will be two days before the 2020 election night. But uh, recently I watched the Netflix original, The Social Dilemma. Um, and it's really all about how uh, big companies and data miners uh, are paying attention to what we're doing on social media in order to uh, show us ads and show us things that they think that we want uh, to see. Now, the problem with that, they say, is that this new technology that has exploded called social media has connected us in ways that we could never have imagined before. But as it connects us, they say, it also monetizes us. As it is connecting us, it is also manipulating us. It is distracting us, and it is ultimately dividing us. In a previous video, um, I, a weekly theistic video, I called the danger of division. I talked about how uh, in a world that is becoming more and more pluralized uh, and socially divided, uh, the enemy likes to use division and distraction as a way to further separate and divide us. And I think the downside to social media is we can create our entire own echo chambers and these uh, ad agencies and these data miners that really were probably put in place uh, in order to try to sell us the goods that we are, are wanting uh, has really now become a much deeper, uh, much more serious problem for us in our, so in our society. Um, because if you haven't seen Social Dilemma, I absolutely recommend that you watch it. It's eye-opening, it's actually a little bit scary. I'll link, put a link in the description if I can, um, but if you have Netflix, just look up Social Dilemma. But we didn't really need that to know that, right? I mean, how many times are you talking with your family about a product and magically an ad on your Facebook feed shows up for that very same product? Um, how many times uh, are we watching our YouTube videos and we find more and more YouTube videos that seem to support the line of thinking that we were just watching? Kind of leading us further and further down this um, rabbit hole of groupthink, uh, creating a tighter and tighter echo chamber for our lives. I mean, we did, we've been doing this for a while. It's not just social media that started this. I mean, we, uh, for probably decades and decades now, have had the choice of which news media outlet fits our 
conservative or liberal views. And so it's easy for us if an event is happening in our country, if we want to hear the things that we want to hear on our perspective, well, we just go to the channel that we know is going to uh, be a part of our echo chamber. Um, have you ever met someone? And you started talking about politics or current events and you uh, thought, man, this person seems like they see the world in a completely different way than I do. Like, what world are you living in? Well, here's the thing, friends. With social media and uh, algorithms f f f forcing us farther and farther down our echo chambers, we may perspectively be living in completely different worlds based all on how we see the world. And when a company or an algorithm just wants your clicks, just wants your money, then the negative downfall of that is you are now not getting any other um, voices in to your echo chamber to try to at least counterpoint what you are finding yourself further and further embedded in your views. And especially in a time like this, especially when we are in a presidential election, um, we can really solidify our echo chambers. And so how do we fight against that? How do we, as Christians, um, stand firm in what we believe, but also allow for other voices in the room so that we don't become so dogmatic or so fundamental in how we see the world that we end up seeing a world that is not really reality anymore? Well, as always, ask God. Ask God to join you in the conversation. Say, God, am I seeing the world still? The way that you're seeing it uh, or have I hunkered down in my own box of understanding not allowing any other opposing views uh, to take shape am I motivated out of a heart of humility or am I intentionally seeing things in the way that supports what I already believe in the United Methodist Church we have in our tradition something called the Wesleyan quadrilateral and it's a way of making sure that whenever it comes to a social issue uh, or an issue of morality, that we can make sure that other voices are allowed in the room. Um, it's, it basically states that when, whenever it comes to a social or political issue that is up for debate or um, under, understanding, we ask ourselves four questions. Um, what does scripture say about this event um, or question of morality? And we say, what has the tradition of the church throughout the centuries, if anything, said about this specific thing? How is tradition um, ascribed or approached this thing? And we talk about uh, what does experience say, which is usually the easiest one because that's the one that we all go to first uh, out of habit. And so when it comes to my experience, what makes the most sense here? Uh, what have I felt or seen in the world uh, as compared to what the TV is telling me? And then finally, what does reason and logic say? What makes the most rational sense? Um, and so in the Wesleyan Quadrilateral, we make sure to give all of those voices uh, their fair say so that we're not just going on emotion, we're not just going on uh, reason or logic or what the tradition has said, but we're seeing all three of those things through the lens and authority of scripture, helping us to better understand what is God's will here? Um, and how can I make sure that what I believe uh, is not just what I have been told to believe and now, now conditioned to believe through crazy algorithms, but uh, what is really the heart of God in this? And so uh, as we approach this election, uh, I will say this, friends. Um, like I said, I'm doing my last sermon this Sunday, uh, and you can check us out online. I'll give you the link here in a minute uh, for my kind of clothing, closing thoughts on the issue. But one of the recurring themes that have showed up in this series for me <clears throat> is that we've got to have a heart of humility. Um, if we are rooted in our authority in Christ and we also place our identity and self-worth there, then we are freed to not place it in a political party um, or a candidate, uh, that ultimately my authority is not to a party but to Christ. And so once I am there, I can say with humility, okay God, I think I know how I feel about this thing but tell me if I'm wrong. 
And it's okay if I'm wrong because all that I am is not wrapped up in whether I'm right or wrong about this or that issue in politics. And so with a big heart of humility, we can test our political beliefs. We can study the strengths of our opponents' political beliefs in order to know where they're coming from and then respectfully and peaceably disagree with them. And so uh, as 2020 election approaches, maybe it's happened already, uh, and maybe you're watching this in retrospect, um, keep that in mind. Know where your authority and identity lies, and then humble your heart enough to ask the question, what if I'm wrong? Um, even if it turns out that you're not, I think you'll be in a better position to navigate through the coming days. Question for the comment section. Um, are you allowing for different voices to enter into your mind space? Not so that your mind will be changed, but so that you will avoid the dangers of groupthink, so that you will avoid the dangers of getting lost in our own echo chambers. Because we all like to be in our echo chambers, but it can be dangerous if we live there for too long. Next week, I am going to talk about why Episode 8 is not a real Star Wars movie to me. Till then, friends, if uh, you are in the Bryan College Station area uh, and would like to come check us out, I'd love for you to come visit us. We have a worship service every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, you can click the link there. Uh, we also live stream. If you are coming in to visit us, know that we are social distancing, so please wear a mask and we will make sure to keep you safe. Or you can go to our Facebook page and you can watch those uh, videos of the past sermon series where I talk about religion and politics and our role in that. Uh, as well as uh, everything else that we've done, and you can live stream us there as well. But until then, friends, um, continue to love each other well. Know that, uh, yeah, we can be firm in our beliefs, but uh, we gotta make sure that we are not too certain that we're right. Otherwise, uh, we might be hardening our hearts to what God might be wanting us to see. And so beware of those echo chambers. Love each other well, friends, and we will see you again next time.